So let's call the meeting to order at 6.02. Thank you. Let me also ask that uh, anybody in the meeting here, please, uh, if you're not speaking, please be on mute to help us with the uh, background noise. Thank you. All right, are there any, any additions or changes to the agenda? Hearing none, is there any public comment? Hearing none, I, I want to do make a comment or a uh, or an announcement here. Um, I am not going to um, seek reappointment come May, and uh, I, I I need to step down. This is just way too much for me. It's uh, definitely affecting me. Um, and if the uh, board wants to take up a vote prior to that, as long as we have it warned, I'm, I'm certainly willing, you know, for that. Um, but I certainly won't stand for reappointment in May. So I just want folks to know that. And if anybody wants to talk to me about what goes on behind the uh, behind the camera here, I'm happy to talk about it. <laughs> so if you uh, you can see what you're getting into. Um, but I see hands raised, um, uh, Siobhan, Tom, then Janiel. So Jerry, I just wonder, does that mean you want to step down immediately or you're willing to serve through your through till May? I'm willing to serve till May, but I'm also very willing to step down in advance if 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 you know if if somebody wants to step up and is ready to you know wants to jump in. That's, that's okay. Really appreciate um, the notice. I'm done. Yes. Well, I, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Tom. Similar sort of thought, but also thinking um, it might be good to have some more overlap with a position as important as yours that there's like a month or something there. You well, can that, help that, relay the, the role. Ab absolutely. That's, that's why I'm giving so much notice, right? So yep. that's, you know, <clears throat> I can I can share information. I can I can I can help in any way that I can, or I can just get the hell out of the way. Whatever whatever is required. Um, but of course, I'm willing to help. I think that's uh, pretty obvious. Janiel. Um, yeah, Jerry. I just want to say that I, I think I speak for um, everybody here when I say that you are tremendous at what you do, and I know that you have a really really demanding day job that goes well above most day jobs into the weekends and evenings and and your your business financial and um, construction um, project management acumen has really carried this organization far and and it's been tremendously helpful to me in the past 18 months or whatever since I've been here um, and I just want you to know how much I appreciate you and and thank you very much. Well, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that considerably. Uh, shall we move on to the prior meeting minutes? Mr. Matt? Uh, yeah, motion to approve the November 14th, 2023 meeting minutes as drafted. Second. <laughs> Delayed second by Siobhan. I, I didn't know what that delay That's was rare. about. Maybe you were giving somebody <laughs> else an opportunity. I was I was trying to eat my soup. Okay. Um, that's a second from Siobhan. Are there any opposed to the motion? Any abstentions? All right, hearing none, the motion passes. Thank you. Um, I, I know that Lori Beth has been having internet difficulties. Lori Beth, are you with us? And are you able to walk through a treasurer's report? I I don't see Lori Beth on here. Um, huh. I do not. Janiel, you had some contact with her today. Any? Uh, I mean, I guess if she comes, if she comes in late, we can always rearrange the order, right? Yeah, she 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 did um, imply that she would be here, but she is having connection issue. I know she was having a high speed internet issues and was looking to po possibly be joining on her phone. Um, so we can just go back to treasurer's report as she joins if she's able to. Okay, that's good. Then um, 
let's talk about our 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 budget here as as folks remember we we approved a draft budget months ago i believe it was october to send forward to the towns we had a public meeting to get commentary from the towns in november of which there was none and then between then and the beginning of of december um we sharpened our pencils and finalized the budget made some changes on the margin um but it's basically the same the same budget and most of our expenditures next year construction related expenditures are really funding dependent as they were in the previous in the previous budget for the most part uh so so that budget was finalized by the finance and audit committee brought to the executive committee approved by the executive committee as a recommendation to the governing board so with that kind of background i'll hand it over to david mannix who uh, has been working quite hard on this budget and has done uh, quite an excellent job for us david are you uh, available to talk through this If you're speaking, I'm not hearing you, but you you don't appear to be on mute. But I'm I'm not sure. Uh... Sorry, sorry. I I was diligent and I muted when you asked this to, and I forgot to unmute. So my apologies. So on the screen, I've got the um, the approved budget from October second, in kind of the middle of the screen here. What what the what Jerry walked through the towns approved. And then in working with the team after that date, we came up with a revised budget on the left here that has um, better insight into what we're doing for grant applications and also um, miles of completion that we'd like to do in 24. And what this screen shows you is that comparison between what was approved on the second, what we're what we're presenting tonight, what we've reviewed with the finance committee and with the the, um, the executive team. So starting kind of at the top there, you can see our grant position uh, is changed a little bit um, on the ARPA dollars and uh, the available funds moving into 24 based on some accruals we had to take for some accounts payable that we held in 23 so that changed the carryover dollars uh, a bit from 4.6 to 4.3 million for, for uh, expenses that we've already incurred in 2023 so we trued that up and then we looked at the subscriber revenues based on down here when you see the budget assumptions construction moving from 205 miles to 302 and the associated DAs with that decision. Basically, our subscriber revenue listed a bit um, by $200,000 based on a more aggressive build-out schedule than what we had originally planned. And to support that build-out schedule on line three so, here, you see sorry, moving sorry from to, the debt from... Yeah, sorry to interrupt. Yep. I yep. kind of think that we might not want to put what DAs were going to be or we're, we're considering building in in a public meeting because if someone sees that and says oh well why didn't you build to this da i think we should try to keep that i mean not it's not you know okay hidden but i i, I think that that might cause us public relations problems or could my my apologies i'm still trying to learn the art of working in a uh, public <laughs> environment <laughs> i'm not good at it i'll give you a free disclosure on that right now I, I like to share data, so that's that's probably one right. of my shortcomings. And, and I but, like that too. Um, and, I, and I don't think that should necessarily yeah. be private. I'm just worried about it from like a public relations. You know, there's one sure. guy in my town who is a, okay. He um, causes he 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 has, he's very argumentative. Anyways, well, I, I guess I guess I guess what I will say is that we put a lot of thought into being very clear about what we're going to go after versus what we're not going to go after in 2024 and make sure that we have all the metrics around that, like the miles and, you know, the costs associated with that built into the plan. And that's what we're, we're sharing with you today is, is, is that difference between kind of what we knew back back when this was initially approved 
and where we are today with with um, what what we like to go after. So having said that, it's a little bit difficult to show you the differences here on this view, but but basically th this is kind of where we where we where we were initially and uh, on the approved budget versus where we are now. So to get to the bottom of it, we've got an in an income going from 10, 10, 10 million to twelve point nine largely driven by an increase in, in uh, uh, short-term debt requests going from five to 7.5 million. And then the expenses um, that uh, are associated with that growth are kind of detailed here. You can step through each of the different buckets. Uh, the biggest expense change is in the um, fiber labor category uh, where we, we're, we're investing more in in construction uh, to uh, to achieve that target, and then uh, at the bottom you see the income going from 10 million to 12, uh, expenses going from 9.8 to 11.7, and the debt service uh, for that loan going from 300,000 to 450, and with that the reserve lifting a little bit from 745 to 1.1. So the uh, the cliff notes on this is we're, we're going after more miles of, of installations in 2024 than we initially planned for, and we're asking for more uh, debt. And what, what we're asking for tonight is this board approve um, these changes. David, was that a motion? Yes. <laughs> Second. 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 No, right. second, me second. Cheater. <laughs> okay, so there's, said a, there's, it was a, motion. <laughs> there's a motion to change the budget as presented and as, as recommended by the executive committee, seconded by Jeremy. Are there any opposed to the motion? Hearing none. Are there any abstentions? Very well, the motion passes. Thank you. We have a budget, uh, a real good one. As I've said before, the, our budgets are getting better all the time, not necessarily more accurate because it's the, uh, it's the future we're projecting, but certainly there's a lot more uh, observation and knowledge and experience going into it. Uh, David, I saw your hand was up. David Healy? I was trying to hit the, the reaction button for clapping. <laughs> oh, okay. It was, hand, it was the hands, but it was wrong hands. All right. Well, better to see you smiling. That's even better than clapping. Thank you very much, everybody. And for all the work that went into this, I, I, I know it was quite a lot. Um, let's see. Lori Beth, I see that you're in the meeting. I'm sorry if you were here before and I skipped over your name. Would, would you like to uh, do the treasurer's report at this time? I can't really do that because I don't have regular internet access. This is just on my phone. Gary, you're on mute. Oops, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so I think we're going to, uh, due to technical difficulties, have to, have to, uh, have to skip, this, skip this item. Can you tell us off, uh, just off the top of your head, Lori Beth, are, are, are there any headwinds we need to be aware of here that would have come out of your treasurer's report or are we sailing smoothly? I think we're doing okay. I have not, of course, gotten the bank reconciliations yet because it's still before the 15th. I won't right. be getting that until either Friday or Monday. Um, but I don't, I'm not aware of any, of any uh, explosions coming up at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so next month, which will be January, you can present the December reconciliation and we'll we'll yes. we'll we'll be working with reconciled numbers. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, let's see. Can we then go to our uh, construction update? Janelle, are you ready to discuss that? Sure. So I'll go through um, the Lucas is not able to join us tonight, so I'll go through all of the um, the things that traditionally Lucas will go through. I also want to um, piggyback on what Lori Beth said and that things are smooth sailing. I, we, I could save this for another update, but just if 
financially, we, we now have an operator's bank account. We have about $11,000 in the bank account from revenues. This is a first for us. This is, this is a big deal and it's worth celebrating. So congratulations to CV Fiber for being a, a, a live high speed internet operator and, and, for, and for having those revenues in the bank. This is the, the best financial news for us. It's like we're putting on our big kid pants now. You know, we really, we really are. So but up to now, it's all of our funding has been um, grants. We are a business. We are running a business. This is, yes, it is a nonprofit. Yes, it is a municipality, but, but this is such wonderful news and a really a, a, an important step in the right direction. With that, I'll move into the construction report. Um, we have six crews in the field now we are we are close to being live in our next distribution area at least for friendlies we are thinking probably by the end of the week um, we plan to con continue with the construction season throughout the winter um, we do we, we are planning on going down to two weeks at the warehouse so we've allowed the um, construction crews to know that kidding that kidding out the materials for construction will have to happen on Tuesdays and Thursdays in the first quarter. That does not seem to be an issue. We are, we are, uh, you know, we're we're looking at we're looking ahead at that, um, but so that construction doesn't slow down. Um, in addition to the co the construction of the fiber internet, we're also working on installs. Waitsfield is doing approximately eight installs a week, and and to be to be increased. Um, I recognize that this goes into the operations update as well, but we do have 46 um, customers as of now. We have passed 1,419 passings as of this morning, which which is 183 miles reflecting fiber and MST tails. So that's where we're at. Waitsfield has hired two new drops crews so that we can start to increase the rate at which we install uh, customers. So we are we are on an upward trajectory, and even though it's now snowing outside, we look to continue on our construction. Fantastic. Um, any any questions for Janiel on that so far? Janiel, do you have any? Anything else you want to talk about materials and warehousing, or should I just morph into the contract? Would you like to uh, talk a little bit, give a little background up about the uh, what's in this contract? Yeah, I will. So for the past 18 months, we've been working with, with a company called Wild Blue Yonder. They've been tremendous at our warehouse management and our inventory management. And every time a curveball comes, they, they, uh, they, they, are up to bat for us. Um, it started out when I first started, we were getting fiber delivered on Main Street. And there really isn't an elevator. I mean, I guess there's an elevator, but you're you're not gonna get fiber in that elevator. And there were there were trucks coming from places trying to deliver our fiber reels on Main Street. And it, it was a mess and and Wild Blue Yonder stepped up to bat for us. Um so we were we were paying them about twenty one thousand dollars a month for inventory management for uh, what they're doing is they were keeping an eye on all of the materials, managing um, and upkeeping our inventory, um, kitting it out to the construction crews, um, complying and maintaining compliance with OSHA and VOSHA, um, and and taking control of the, the safety of our materials, uh, which, which means cameras on it, um, audit support, things like that. Um, as we got later in the year, we realized we needed more audit support <laughs> after we went through our first audit and we needed to have more, uh, more heavy duty oversight of the numbers that go into um, inventory management and support for um, spreadsheets that were being required for our grant reporting and things like that. So we, we ended up doing a, par uh, a part time um, employee on a contract basis, which brought our um, our rate up to about twenty six thousand eight hundred a month um, for the flat rate, and then um, the, uh, moving into the new into the new year, we decided that since we we do require so much audit support, 
uh, we'd like to have that person on um, the regular contract. But we decided that uh, because a lot of the time the warehouse is overstaffed, we could actually cut back on some of the warehouse staff taking deliveries in. And part of what allowed us to do that is because we've already ordered 400 miles of materials. So most of the big shipments have already arrived. So there needs to be less support from the warehouse um, side of things, um, just taking uh, inventory in and out on a physical level and more support um, for the numbers. So we adjusted those, we adjusted those personnel. Um, our current contract will start with the same company under a different name, by the way. They, they rebranded uh, from Wild Blue Yonder to Straight Line Broadband, but it's the same exact company. They're just targeting more um, the broad the broadband industry, so they changed their name. Um, and the the terms are the same as as the first contract. However, we're now we're taking on the license for inventory management, which I think we probably should have been doing from the beginning, um, but this will give us a, a, a bit more owners, legal ownership of the inventory management. Um, and practically speaking, we've taken more control of it since Lucas has started and is taking on a lot of the inventory management purchasing roles as well. Um, so the, car, the rate that we're looking at going into now is $31,000 a month. So there is, there is an increase. Um, and for the first quarter, we're looking at going part-time. So that'll save us $45,000, um, in the first quarter due to the slower construction season. So those are the terms we've negotiated for warehousing. Um, and I should also state that they are managing our warehouse, our box yard, that is the outside yard, as well as, um, to the extent we still need it. And we do still have reels there at the WEC yard. Um, now I see Mike, you have your, your hand up. Yes, Jamila, how are you? Um, yeah, I'm with Barrytown. Um, uh, I, I guess the question is, um, I, I've seen, I, I haven't seen in any documents or data that I've combed through on the, on the website or anything else that you guys have had indicating, um, I guess, projected timelines for certain towns slash cities. Um, and I was wondering, like, because if I update my select board in Barry Town, they're going to ask, inevitably, they're going to ask, well, when when are they going to do it? You know, when are they coming into Barry Town area? So I don't really have an answer for that at this yeah. point. So I, I think, um, I, right, so I think the best, we are trying to be more clear, more transparent about um, sequence of build. And this probably goes into, this is probably better suited for Olivia to answer when we get to the marketing update. Um, she did put out an amazing year-end report that goes through each of the areas that we're building and, and the order. Now, yeah, yeah, Jerry, or actually, yeah, um, Jerry, did you want to add to that? Yeah, I just want to add one one thing, Mike, and and that is that we are we are really focusing on the areas that have the most underserved or among the most underserved, um, and that's that's where we've clustered our initial construction work. Uh, even though we're we're you know we're we're we will be designing and 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 building out to get all of the underserved in CB Fibers territory, we've started. And, and are still building and will be in 2024 for the most part in areas where uh, the, the underserved are clustered. We might pass some folks that are served to get to the underserved. You know, you gotta go, go down route 12 no matter what you do. So we, we have to do that like everybody else. But then when we go out uh, into the hinterlands from there, we're really focusing on getting to the underserved. So regardless of what the what the month or year might be when where, where you fall on the schedule that is the logic behind where where we are um okay I, so i, I, I hope that I, 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 a little bit. I, yeah jerry i agree with you totally i have no problem with that at all um from from the data way back in the beginning when i first started this um i i saw that in barry town there was only like 50 addresses I don't know if that's gotten bigger, small, or whatever. So obviously, Barrytown is not going to be, you know, on the on the on the 
high part of the list because you got other areas and towns and cities that probably need more, a lot more. Um, I just say, when I go back to Battery Town Select Board, they're gonna ask and I wanna try to give them some type of general air, you know, not a specific obviously, but a general idea. Okay, is this gonna be, you know, fall of 2024 that's gonna hit Barry Town kind of thing? Well, I'll tell you what we can do, Mike. I, I don't wanna answer off the cuff and give a wrong answer. And the, the reason I say that is because we really don't go by town. We go by design areas and design areas can have multiple towns that it touches on or a single right. town might have multiple design areas touching the town. So uh, we'll go back and we will take a look to see if any of the DAs that we have, uh, you know, where our plans are for the DAs and where Barrytown, the, the underserved in Barrytown might fit in those DAs. And we will uh, give, give you a, a better answer than something that would be off, off the cuff right now. I was just wondering if, if there's a way, is there a way to like create, and obviously this is not specific or you, you're not gonna go to the timeline, but a general timeline for all the CDs that, that are part of this to say, okay, this is what the general projection is for each CUD, for each town slash city, you know, and what we project which might change obviously depending you know depending on a lot of you know uh, circumstances but I, I'm there's nothing out there where someone can look at it and say oh okay Barry town falls in this area you know or even like you know uh, uh, Montpelier falls in this area you know kind of thing um so I'm just wondering if there's a way to create that type of table um we, we, you know, we haven't really been making our full build out plan in that way, uh, in a detailed okay. way, that transparent. Um, but look, there are lots of hands up. So let me go to the hands. I have uh, Jeremy and then Siobhan. Thank you. I mean, from for my point of view, creating a document or a table like that is incredibly dangerous because we don't know when, for example, the federal deed money is going to come in. We don't even really have an estimate of the year that that'll come in. Maybe 2025. I mean, we're not certain. We hope that it'll come in, but we don't know when. And that's going to massively impact how quickly and where we can build. Um, if we put oh. out a date, even if it's just an approximate, like we would like to be in Barrytown by... 2025 and then we don't meet that there are likely to be some people who will have taken that as gospel and who will get quite upset with us i mean that that's that's what i'm running into with um people in plainfield who um are who seem to have gotten it into their head that service was promised to them and then they're mad that um we didn't build there first kind of makes it hard from a marketing standpoint let's put it that way it makes it hard from a lot of standpoints yeah yeah that's true <laughs> siobhan your okay. hand you're next on the list there yeah olivia sit there yes 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 it does <laughs> <laughs> i so i've got i've got a, several uh people in my constituency i'm in orange um who are honestly not even on the planned map right now because they're in very tricky areas. Um, and some of them were maybe gonna have to deal because the shape of the mountains, we're probably gonna have to get say easy fiber or somebody to serve them rather than us. But we can't say, we, just, we have no idea. So the best I can tell people, and this is what I tell people all the time, and I've been saying this for the last five years is everyone means everyone. Everyone in our district who wants internet and is on the grid, we're gonna get there eventually. We don't know when because we don't control supplies, we don't control the federal funding, and we don't control um, the, the, uh, 
the vagaries of the market and things like that. So the best I can offer mm -hmm. a lot of my constituents, and they seem okay with this because I think honestly, if I gave them a date, they wouldn't believe me anyway. But those are orange people, so so I don't know. <laughs> but you know, I tell them we're gonna get there, and they seem okay with that. I mean, you know, they're disappointed. I'm not saying next month, but at least I'm giving them an honest answer. And I think that that counts for something. And I'm done. Mike, okay. I hope this is helpful to you. It is, it is. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, and I, we still will do what I said and follow up and see if we're touching Barrytown in, in anything that we have in the, in the very near future. And we will let you know. Okay, I'll, I'll touch base with Olivia too. I know she's she's emailed me a couple of things. Excellent, excellent. Um, getting back to our contract, I think we were getting pretty close to making a motion. One thing that I hadn't mentioned previously is that this contract has worked its way up through the um, through the uh, committees, like everything else. And last week at this time. This contract was recommended to be forwarded to the governing board for approval. So with that, I would I will make the motion that we that the governing board approve the contract with Straight Line Broadband, formerly Wild Blue Yonder, to continue their inventory and warehousing services for CV fiber uh, through the coming year. Second. 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 Okay, that was seconded by Jeremy. Thank you. Uh, are there any additional discussion, Tom? Go ahead. It was not. It was either Tom um, or myself. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tom. Go ahead. Um, I'm. I, I caught the how much it was that we're currently paying a month. I didn't catch what the future amount would be, and if that's being held back, um, is it within ten, twenty percent of the amount that we're currently looking at, or oh. yeah, yeah, it, yeah, we're we're currently paying um twenty one plus fifty eight twenty one thousand plus fifty eight hundred, which comes to twenty six thousand eight hundred um for our current services, and we will be paying thirty one thousand dollars on the new contract. So I I mean the 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 rates have increased, but this is much more tailored to what we need in this phase, um because our needs have changed a bit. Um, Janiel, don't forget though, for the first three months, we're only paying half of that. So when yes. you look for the year, it's, it's almost a wash. Yeah, that's right. Thank you for reminding me, Jerry. So, uh, for quarter one, for January, February, and March, we expect, uh, because we expect a slower, um, construction need, we're paying, um, 15,000, um, a month for each of those three months. So yes, that's an that's forty five thousand that we're saving by going down to a limited warehouse schedule just for the first quarter. Great, thank you. Any additional discussion? We have a motion. It's seconded. Are there any opposed to the motion? Are there any abstentions? Hearing none, thank you very much. These guys have been going on a month to month while we have been negotiating with them to try to get this right. And uh, kudos to Janiel uh, for, for working this through. Thank you, everybody. Uh, let me go back to my agenda. Uh, I, think, I guess it's back to Janiel. Operations update and outlook. And then when you're done, Janiel, you can hand it over to uh, Olivia, please. Yeah, so so the operations uh, um, highlight is that we are that we have forty six um, that we have forty six subscribers, but also and that we're increasing our uh, rate at which we can sign people up by um, by increasing the drops crews and and also that we hope to we intend to get that second distribution area lit at least for friendlies by the end of this week. They're just going through the final testing, um, so operations is in. It is in very good shape. We're also working with Waitsfield. Um, they are charging us a flat rate for our drops. And as we go through the, the connections, we're realizing that some of these drops are really long. So we will have to go back and renegotiate some of the details um, for the, those services 
we haven't had enough data to go there yet. Maybe after we have our hundredth customer, we have to go back and look at the numbers. But um, but for now, that's the the that's where we're at with operations. And I guess we could go into marketing for, from there. Sure, go go ahead, Olivia, please. Unless there are any questions, any questions on the operations update for Janiel? Okay, Olivia, please go ahead. Well, I'll start with the hot ticket item of last week, which was our year end update. Uh, all in, uh, we looked at the at the data, at the analytics, and the amount of traffic that went into our website 24 hours afterwards was actually three and a half times higher than what we've normally experienced on our site. So all in from a brand awareness uh, perspective, really, really, you know, nicely done. Um, from a, a lead generation perspective, we had over 100 people either sign up as paying subscribers or pre-register on our site. So again, from a lead generation perspective, I think we we really you know hit the target there. All in, um, the amount of email communications that came in, there was a lot. There was a lot of buzz. Uh, you know, we we saw everything. We had questions about conduit DIY. We had questions about why am I not included? Um, you know, within the current build plan. So some of the things that we did afterwards were, uh, you know, we were reacting to some of the inquiries. We've set up a conduit alias group, for example. So if anybody has a conduit related question, that that communication is really streamlined. Uh, we've created an FCC challenge page on our site that was recently launched. It essentially goes through, you know, what does it mean of being qualified as underserved or unserved? And how can I challenge that? Uh, we've had a couple of folks that have come to us and said, well, that's not fair. Uh, you know, I'm actually not getting the service that I should be getting. So we're going through that process of educating, but also leading folks to the right resource to make sure that they're able to uh, continue their journey. And if we have enough challenges, then we'll certainly, you know, we can we can go back and take a look at certain addresses and why they're not included in the current build. Um, from another perspective from an email communication, since it did so well, I'm actually planning a January update. I'm trying to figure out whether this should be seasonal. Um, so every couple of months or whether we should commit to a monthly basis. There's not all too much uh, you know, new material that goes on from a month to month perspective. So maybe we'll streamline that from uh, every month to every season, for example, that might be the best way to go. Um, but again, we'll revisit that to determine what the next schedule is for, for the email communications moving forward. Um, everybody should have heard from me in some way, shape or form regarding their town bulletin inserts. Uh, town meeting day is coming up. So everybody should have received a copy of the town bulletin insert and everything was sent to your town clerk as well. Um, moving forward also, our holiday card is coming out next week, so everybody will be getting a copy of that. And also, um, we sent over a delegate survey for information. If you didn't receive a copy of the link, uh, I can certainly send that over, but I would love to sit and meet with you all for just the 30 minute session moving forward, just so that we could really start planning outreach for your town. Uh, you guys know your town best. I would really appreciate your feedback. Thank you. Uh, any questions for Olivia? There's a, there's a lot of good work going on there. Quite a lot of good work, and 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 she she didn't mention all the fire drills that she does every time somebody has a question that is asking the wrong question and then doesn't understand the answer they got. So it goes through a whole do loop. And uh, there's, a, there's, there's a lot of that, <laughs> as one can imagine. Any uh, additional questions for Olivia? All right, if not, let's go on to a, a funding and audit update. Um, I'll start this off. Uh, first of all, the audit, um, we are, engaging or have engaged uh, the same audit firm that is going to do the single audit for us again this year. They did an excellent job for us last year. 
Um, they were extremely helpful in, in us getting everything aligned and really coming through that first single audit so cleanly. Uh, I, I was extremely impressed uh, that they were able to understand what we were doing and translate that into uh, the, the ap appropriate procedures that are needed uh, for a single audit. So I thought they, they were extremely helpful for us last year, and I believe they will do just as good a job for us this year. Um, and this is uh, the, the two things. One, this is not a choice. We have to do this very detailed level of audit every year, especially now that we're uh, receiving more than 750 or spending more than $750,000 of federal funds. Uh, so we are required to do this. And secondly, there are very few folks that do this kind of audit. Um, when I was looking, I had started looking for an auditor a year before we needed our first single audit. And I went through everybody in Vermont that I could find uh, and couldn't find anybody that was interested in taking on this business. They are in New Hampshire. Um, and they have a lot of experience in the telecom industry, and they really have been a good fit for us. Uh, so that's the audit update. The funding update, um, we got bounced out of the VCBB presentation yesterday, where we were, we were supposed to continue our discussion um, of our funding situation and our uh, uh, grant amendment to modify our grant. Uh, that got pushed out into January. I guess that's just as well. The VCBB is so busy. Um, we really want to be able to grab their attention when we do present and not have them just waiting for us to be done so they can get on to the next thing. So I'm, I'm hoping that um, January will be a good opportunity for us. And really, as far as we're concerned, between now and January, we're fine. So it's not as if that's holding up any of our work or any of our any of our progress. Um, yeah. And then, and then also in uh, as far as funding goes, uh, we have an RFP on the street, as they say, for our bridge loan, um, with responses due January the 9th. Is that correct, Janiel? I believe it's January the 9th. Um, and we will. I believe that means we will have an update for, yes, what's the second Tuesday? Is the 7th? No, that's January 23. I'm sorry. Anyhow, we should have it in time for our second Tuesday uh, governing, board, governing board meeting. Um, and Janiel, is there anything else you'd like to, to, oh, David has his hand up. Hold on. Go ahead, David. And you're on mute, David. Um, you also going to have the B, VCBB put this RFP out to their four, five or six firms. Is that underway or has it been done? Yes, yes. Rob, uh, Rob has it. Um, he was on the list of people to get it from a uh, PFM. Great, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So it's being it's being distributed through two venues. Thank you, David. Yeah, that's correct. Janiel, is there anything else you'd like to add to that particular uh, funding and audit update? Well, I, I want to point out that we got four positive responses to our request for expressions of interest that the RFP was based on. So we 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 are feeling positive about the the ask. We did ask for um, up to thirteen million dollars in funding. Um, so we're going to be able to compare the terms of the responses. Um, terms and like how much when we can draw down what the interest rates are things like that so um, maybe there's going to be some direct opportunities maybe some underwriting opportunities so we're going to compare and contrast what what the market says we can do and and I'll add that the ask is that size because we've added the potential match for bead which probably won't be until 2025 but you we're under the impression that you may need to show that you have somehow the match, part of which can be work in kind, by the way. So we have no idea how much the match is going to be. We don't know how much our funding is necessarily going to be. Uh, so we're, we're trying to, to
to cover all our bases so that we are in position to take advantage of whatever opportunity befalls us. Um, Janiel, would if oh Olivia, go ahead, please. Well, I also wanted to mention on the funding front, uh, legislative day is coming up end of January. So we're putting together our messaging and communications plan in terms of what our ask will be on the legislative front as well. Um, there's a couple of hot ticket items that are uh, interrelated with broadband. And so we're putting together our messaging there to see if there's any you know, additional asks uh, that we have. Uh, and this is more on a unified sister CUD front. Excellent, thank you. Henry, good to hear from you. Hello there. Um, I just wanted to ask about, um, in terms of the uh, financing organizations that you've received bids from, are are any of these um, Vermont um, agencies or are they all commercial lenders? What I will tell you, we, 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 it's, you know, it's part of a closed process, so we can't re real, re really go into a lot of detail here, Henry, but I will tell you that I know that there is at least one institution that is Vermont-based um, that it, it is going to be potentially underwritten that has expressed interest. Now, we haven't received actual bids yet, but there has, there, there also has been, there has been interest. Yeah, yes. Thank, Thank you, Janiel. Spot on. Well, uh, would you like to move into the uh, finance manager update, Janiel? And uh, if if you need some assistance from the the folks, go after it. Yeah. So so we are as an organization moving into the next phase where we're we're looking at all these different funding options. We're 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 getting more mature in our ability to budget. Uh, we're going to into our second audit season. So we are. We are going into a new. We have subscription fee uh, subscriptions now, so there's a lot of changes. What we've done is we've taken a step back and looked at what this organization needs in the next year going forward. What do we need? What do we have? What do we need? What do we have? We have treasurer, we have executive director, we have finance committee, uh, finance and audit committee, chair, vice chair, and the committee itself. Um, we have our auditors, we have our CPA. Um, so we we looked at, at all of the roles that need to be filled statutorily and practically, um, and from a regulatory standpoint to comply with all our grant requirements. Um, and so we put together a job description, and that is the gaps we got to fill. And so we put out a job posting for a finance manager, and that that listed all of the things that we needed to fill. Um, and we got four responses. Um, we interviewed four qualified candidates, all relatively local, um, meaning they have some tie to Vermont, or they have a house in Vermont, they work out of Vermont, or they're based in Vermont. Um, one of the so one of the candidates is a an expanded scope of work. So rather than a traditional individual applying, we we also heard from um, an expanded scope of work from our current CPA, and the the group met and we interviewed everyone and we um, we made the so. I don't know how much detail we want to go into because we're still we're still in a position of del deliberating. Even yeah. though we did make a decision, we still have to go back and iron out all of the details um, based on information that came out of the meeting. Um, so we are now assessing all of our options. Okay, so we we know that we need to fill this role, um, but we also know that we. We need um, we need to have certain roles filled by executive director, by the um, by the finance and audit committee, by the treasurer, by all of the existing roles, and in order to make sure that we have the appropriate um, safeguards in place um, for compliance, we're still going through all of those details to make sure that we make the right mm -hmm. recommendation to this board. David, you want to add? No, it's that's well said. I, th I think one of the challenges of the committee is it's not a full time role at this point. So it's difficult to find somebody that can put 15 to 20 hours in and, um, you know, have that match between what we need and what they're willing to offer. So that's been one of the challenges that we face as a committee or as a working group. Yeah. 
Well, I, I would add that it, it appears that there have been some good candidates and that there's 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 been some good back and forth um, and evaluation of those candidates. So we will, I believe, have a finance manager um, in the coming weeks or months, and you know maybe it'll maybe it'll be a final approval on our January meeting, or probably not good to have a special meeting between any time now and and our next governing no. board meeting. So it, hopefully it'll be for our next governing board meeting. I know David loves the special meetings, but we're gonna we're gonna try not to do it. Yeah, I mean it's a really good position to be in. Really, we 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 do have solid candidates and we are very lucky to be in that position. Mm -hmm. Any additional questions or, or discussion about our finance manager update? Okay, next, um, I think I'm gonna flip this around a little bit. Janiel, do you wanna talk a little bit about delegate training and then maybe Alan can fill us in on where we are with changes to HR policy or how, however however that works between the two of you, please. Yeah, those two things are definitely connected, so I'll lead into it. Um, but yes, we, we are, as an organization, we are wanting to be more supportive of all of our folks. And that includes board members and it includes um, employees. Uh, we wanna have a clear, a clear uh, policy or policies that are supportive, that we wanna be a great place to work. Uh, whether you are a board member or an employee, we want you to feel supported and to know where your, what your expectations are. So what does CV Fiber expect of you? So toward that end, we are working on our, our, on our policies and I'll let Alan speak to that. But in addition to that, we, we want to train the board. Um, Olivia mentioned that she had put out a board uh, delegate survey, and that's a that's a great tool for us to start to get, start to get some feedback. We did receive several responses, um, but we we haven't received responses from everyone. And what we would like to do is sometime probably in the first quarter to do some board training that will encompass some of this human resources personnel that's encompassed in the policy that Alan will discuss. Um, but but also just what's expected of you and what do you say? You know, Mike, you had some really good questions earlier about what do I tell Barry? That kind of that kind of stuff. You know, we really need to help support our board members um, to the to the best of our ability. So I, I'm looking at something probably in the first quarter to start on a more a holistic training as well as some human resources training. We can go into personnel policy if you'd like, Alan. Oh, um, but but Mike did have a question. Uh, but Mike, yeah, did, did you have a question? You're on mute, Mike. You know, I, I've come into this while you guys were already up and running, and it's really, I really feel like I'm a distant planet. I sort of half know what's going on. Um, all the time. So any kind of delegate training uh, would be really helpful. I, I really feel that I could have benefited from that and still can. Um, like Olivia has mentioned, sending out all these things to the delegates. I haven't received any of that and I don't know where to look for it. So, you know, that kind of stuff, um, uh, you know, it's uh, would be very helpful to, to new board members, especially including myself. I still feel like a new board member. Chuck, do you think you can help fill that gap? Does 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 Mike have a CV Fiber email address? Uh, Chuck, and Chuck, I have a, you know, I'm used to emails coming to my email address. I'm not used to going and looking for other emails. Um, Chuck has filled that gap, and that's how I was able, you know, I hadn't re um, received any information about this meeting tonight and I sent an email this morning and then I realized, oh, I have this other thing, um, which I'm still not that familiar with, but I was able to find it and find the information. So so Chuck has filled that and I just don't commonly go there to look for stuff. I don't know when things are coming out. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so it's been a little bit of a challenge for me to keep up with what's going on. Um, un un but, understood. Chuck, do you think maybe you can get in touch with Mike and maybe you can use an alias so that things get bounced into his his typical inbox or something like that? Um, 
Unfortunately, that is disabled at uh, the domain level for CD okay. Fiber. Um, that was part of the settings that came in the recommended package for a public entity, uh, largely because uh, the risk profile here is that if you have stuff coming in and out of your personal email address, your personal email address, your personal emails could get wrapped up into discovery should something go wrong and they need to to do do uh, uh, discovery. But um, that said, uh, you know, if people are willing to take that risk, I I think it's possible for our IT group to change that setting. I don't think it's a mandatory setting. So it's really a, a decision we would need to make as a, uh, as a policy uh, for this body as to whether we would allow that sort of forwarding to occur or not. Um, yeah. um, it's, yeah, it's definitely sure. a risk I'm, vector, but you know. I'm sorry, Chuck, Chuck this is Mike Milo with Barry. Uh, just, to, just to let you know, I have the CV Fiverr email forwarded to my personal email. And it's working? Yes. And you have to go into the settings of your CV Fiber email. No, uh, unless 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 our IT department changed that very, very recently, uh, that actually breaks your email um, and, and makes it so it, oh. it, it doesn't work the way it's supposed to. Um, I'll take a look at your account and see why uh, it, it appears to be working for you and nobody else. Uh, but everybody else who's tried to do it has gotten blocked in doing so. And I've had to like spend oh. time unwinding it. Oh wait! Don't turn it off. <laughs> I won't. I won't turn it off if it's working for you. Like I, I, you know, I'm not going to be the, no, the I, bad I, cop here. Yeah, I, I but I get it. I get it, to, I get it forwarded to my Yahoo email. Interesting. I'll I'll take a look at that. But um, okay. may, maybe maybe our IT group did make a change on that front already. Um, um, but uh, as far as the last time I looked at it, which was a few weeks to a month ago, um, it, it was still set that nobody could do it for themselves. It had to be done by the IT group. Okay, uh, no problem. All right, somebody has their hand up. Christopher, go ahead, sir. All right, sorry, I don't um, I don't mean to put a damper on things, um, but I, I probably would be the bad guy and say, I, I think it's a really bad idea to have uh, company email forwarded to a personal email address. Um, you know, being in the world with uh, in, in security, that's a that's a very very bad practice and a slippery slope, um, and can get out of hand really really quickly for the reasons that that Chuck uh, mentioned. So, um, if 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 it were to come to a vote on it, I would adamantly vote against uh, opening that up. I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Uh, uh, understood, and I don't expect that's coming to a, a vote here. I was just hoping that maybe maybe Chuck and Michael could get together and figure out something that that would help him out. Um, I, you know, knowing that I just should go and look occasionally um, was is uh, probably the best solution for me. That 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 would probably work. Yeah. Yes, I'm so and, used to things just if, coming to me that to, to go look for something. Um, it, it's just yeah, not and part I will of say I that do. if you, whatever you use for email, you should be able to set it up so that you can you can receive your CV Fiber me email in the same location, whether it be, you know, Outlook or or Mac Mail. I think even Gmail allows you to check email from another client. I don't know, maybe Chuck, you know. I don't know off the top of my head, but I will say uh, because uh, most of the delegates are on the web-based CV Fiber mail. Um, one suggestion I've had that's worked for a lot of people is if you bookmark your inbox right into your bookmarks bar on your browser, um, and then and then it's right there and you can see it and it's just a single click to get to it. Um, and that can help remind you that it's, that it's there, but just a suggestion. Thanks, Chuck. Okay, Siobhan. I have tabs that I never close and Outlook is one of those. Got it. No comment on that. <laughs> Alan, uh, would you like to update us on your on your HR policy uh, discussion? Sure. Sorry, I don't mean your HR policy. You know what I mean. <laughs> right, I my it. HR policy. <laughs> I love this guy. You know, it's like a baby. Uh, we're getting close. I think we had hoped to be able to present it to you tonight, but we have continued to go back and forth, either in discussions we've had at the policy committee, uh, 
or uh, questions with that we've had that have gone to our legal counsel, which then requires him to review it and to get back to us. So there has been some back and forth. The good news is, I think we're really being very careful about what we're going to present to you, and it's going to be in pretty good shape when you see it. We're hoping to be able to present it at the January meeting. Uh, and, you know, I do have to warn you, this is a pretty hefty document. It's, uh, I think, about 35 pages. And we have done two of the biggest sections already. As a board, we've approved a couple of those two sections. But there's still a lot of other stuff that you're going to see in the personnel policy that I'm sure you're going to want to at least understand or to know that they're there because it's a very comprehensive effort to try and put in order something that we really should have done before we hired our first employee. Uh, and the fact that we didn't do it then means we're catching up and we're really working as hard as we can and doing the best job that we can. If you want to get a sense Discussions. You're, you're are, breaking up on a sound, or it's either my internet or yours, but it sounds like you're breaking up a bit. Yeah. It's mine because I'm back on my consolidated account. Un understood. Been having oh. trouble with the big boy with high speed people. Yeah. Yeah. I'm done. That's it. Unless people um, have questions. Well, for the January meeting, will will uh, read ahead be available for us, Alan? Hopefully, the it, it all depends if we can get legal counsel to go through the last stuff we did last week in time for us to get it to the executive committee, which has to, has to go through the executive committee, and then the executive committee has got to give its approval before it can come to the board, and. It's possible calendar wise to do that, but it's just a question of how fast the individual pieces are moving for us, Jerry. That's, that's okay. So it could be February, best. but your intention is read ahead material prior to the meetings. Hopefully, yes. Well, we don't want to talk about a 35 page document that we haven't seen. Oh, in the last minute? <laughs> yeah. Really? Exactly. Really? Yeah. Really? Okay, I, mean, well, I got it. Well, you have seen a big chunk of it already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we we don't. I I would. My preference would to be not to have a three hour meeting, editing a document with thirty people. Correct. We want okay. to avoid that at all costs. Thank you, <laughs> David Maddox. You're up, sir. Yeah. Hey, Alan. Is there training? on this policy part of the launch, or does that come after the approval? Uh, it probably should come after the approval because that's when we'll know what's going to be enforced. Uh, or what, what, what's going to be in the policy. There could be on the executive committee level or on the board level. So we, we, we want to have a stable, Target before we start organizing training around that. Okay, uh, but it's on your roadmap to do the training it, as well. Then, yeah, yeah, that seems like that makes good sense. Thank we, you, Alan. We very definitely are going to be covering this. Okay, thank you. Any Perfect. other questions for Alan, or kudos for his? Uh, his internet provider who's disrupting our meeting. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, the last the last agenda item here is a, is two part. One I oh go ahead Chuck. I think you're still muted Chuck or something. Uh, it, it's uh it's related to this agenda item so feel free to give the context first and come back to me. Oh okay. What what I what I'm going to say is that we have committees that could use more members. And we we have committees that s some of them need a chair, some of them need a vice chair, and there probably isn't a committee that couldn't use another helpful set of hands. So I wanted to put that out there for everybody. If you have the opportunity, if you think you have the time, 
if, if you could please, you, you know who are, everything's on the website, you know who our committee folks are, contact anybody, contact me, Janiel, um, Olivia, and, and we can see about getting you uh, connected with a committee. Uh, we, we, we do really um, need the help. That's one part. The other part is the Vicuda membership. Uh, we had two delegates to Vicuda, if I am correct, and now we were, are down to one. Is that correct, David, Janiel? I think that's where we're at. Oh, um, I'm the I'm the primary delegate to Vicuda. Um, David he, David Healy, are you the are you the um, are you are, are you my backup? You tend to be on those calls a lot, so I thought maybe you were. Oh, you're you're actually on mute, David. Ray was the alternate. I was just going to meetings because I know a lot. Yeah, you do. Right. right. That that's that that's what I thought. So I'm I'm uh, I don't know if anybody wants to stand for this now and we could have a vote but um i don't mean to put anybody on the spot in that way but i just wanted to let everybody know that this is a a, a very important link for us uh these this association of uh, vermont cuds and if you're interested you can either stand for it now or you can talk with Janiel and get more of a sense of what's going on there and, and we can take it from there. Now, there's a number of hands up. So before I go to any of the hands, is there anybody that wants to stand for this position or anybody that wants to nominate anybody? I, I, think, there's uh, a nominate few David. I think there's a few issues here though. I think that I should explain what Vicuda is and what it entails so that people know what they're standing up for. But also, we don't want to. We don't want to um, forget that. I, I think don't we have to? Don't we have to talk about the chair for the finance and audit committee and the and the membership for the communications committee, right? Okay. So there's a lot going. On. There's a lot in this one agenda item. <laughs> hey, I'm 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 sorry. I my internet. Um, well, there's lots of ways to describe it, but it it went dead for a few minutes there, <laughs> or at some point. <laughs> Um, I was talking about Vicuda membership. Did you guys finish that discussion? Did, is 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 there anybody that that yeah. is before I get to the other hands up? Is J there anybody Jerry, that Jerry, Jerry, what yeah. what Janiel suggested is uh, that she might want to give a little bit of additional overview on what actually being in that role uh, pertains before uh, soliciting people to see if they stand. Um, Jeremy, Jeremy Matt did slip in a motion for, for uh, David, which I will second right here and now because I was going to nominate him uh, as part of my hand being up. Um, so uh, we, we have a motion on the floor that is now seconded. Oh, okay. Uh, D David, are you, are you willing to take that role on? Yes. Or a nomination at any rate, but yeah. Okay. It would be good if Janiel gave a summary of what the Vicuda is all about, because it's something that the, we're paying membership dues to, and you should get an idea of what we get from them. Yeah, I well, think we're paying about a thousand dollars a month. I mean, it's not nothing. It's it's a, it's a fee, and and we what it is is it's the um, Vermont um, CUD Association. Um, we meet. We meet once a month for the board, but we actually meet a lot for the different committees. We, uh, we have finance, um, Vicuda Finance. We have uh, Vicuda Legislative and Policy. We have a make ready group. Um, there's going to be a subcommittee looking for um, share, bead, for instance, is one of them. So we're, we're, we actually meet at least once a week, and it's probably more than that. Um, what we do is we're, we're the organization of CUDs. They all get together and talk about shared interests planning the legislative and policy day that Olivia was talking about. Um, we have somebody looking at all of our financial needs and assessing what, where we can share resources um, and uh, marketing. Um, we're talking about how to strategically work through make ready issues. Um, so if you have a specific interest in furthering the CUDs, interests, not just CV Fiber, but all the CUDs, because United, we are stronger, um, and, and it's a very important organization. We also have 
we have worked with shared purchasing in the past. We got less expensive fiber um, by doing those shared purchasing. We've talked about other sh sort of shared resources and we're just in the beginning phases. It will expand. So Vicuda entails just sitting on just that monthly meeting. But if you wanna get more involved um, to push the CUD interest forward, uh, you, would, you would have the opportunity to do that. And David, you have been uh, tremendously yeah. knowledgeable in that. The other the other role that served for all the CUDs is they actually are asked to present at every VCBB board meeting. And and the CUDA has been very active at reviewing the bead planning documents, which are huge. I mean, the phase one plan and the phase two plan are like 300 page documents. The digital equity plan is another 200 pages, I believe. And so board members and committees have been publicly, you know, working on editing Word documents and giving those comments back to the board so that the board at least knows where, we, where we're coming from and what our needs are. <clears throat> Thank you. All right, so Chuck, I saw you took your hand down, which means you don't need to have your issue in the middle of this, right? Perfect, got it. Um, so we have a nomination, uh, David Healy, uh, to be our delegate. Is it the primary or secondary? There is no such thing. It's just it's one of alternate. our two delegates, right? The alternate. It's the alternate. It's the alternate. I'm the primary. It's the alternate. Okay. So the motion is for David Healy to be our alternate delegate to uh, Vicuda, and that was seconded by. Remind me. That was me. Seconded Chuck. by Chuck. Thank you, Chuck. No more discussion here. Okay. Are there any opposed to the motion? Any abstentions? David, you're not going to abstain. You're going to vote for yourself. Good man. I would too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The motion passes. Thank you very much, David. Thank you. That's that's wonderful. Thank you. Chuck, go ahead now. You've been quite patient. All right. Um, so we have a member of our body who would like to be uh, officially named to the communications committee. Uh, if you recall, all appointments to committees are board ratified. And so uh, I'm just going to make a quick motion. Uh, before I do that, the person um, in question could not join us this evening, but his name is Bruce Stevenson. He's the alternate delegate from Middlesex, um, and he has already been very deeply involved in helping outreach strategy, helping with writing <laughs> communications um, and really helping, you know, the overall communications endeavors of CV Fiber in the past. So um, he certainly will get my vote of uh, of, of approval uh, and he will make a very strong addition to the communications committee. So with all that said, uh, whoop, did someone want to jump in before I, with all that said? Okay, nope. with, with, with all that said, uh, I hereby move that Bruce Stevenson be named to the communications committee. Second, second. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, I think you still got it in there, even even, even though everybody knew it was coming. Uh, There's going to so be a are... revolt if you keep giving it to me, Jerry. <laughs> well, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> um, if uh, Let's see. So we have a motion. We have a second. Are there any opposed to the motion? Hearing none, any abstentions? All right, the motion passes. Congratulations, Bruce. Congratulations, Chuck. Um, I'm sure Bruce is a good addition to any committee. So that's excellent. Excellent. Um, all right, it is 7.15 and it just happens to say adjourn on that this agenda. One thing. Yes. Didn't we, didn't we have a vote at the Finance and Audit Committee for David Mannix and Linda Gravel and don't we need to make that official here? Yes. Oh, we can, yeah, yeah, bring it. Oh. Well, I'd like yeah, to nominate I make a David motion. Mannix. Oh, never mind. You go ahead, Tom. Uh, David Mannix be uh, placed as the uh, chair of the Finance Committee. And? Uh, yes. And Linda Gravel as vice chair. And I don't, yeah, I don't think we need to do vice chairs, but sure. Oh, okay. Well, no, I think second. we do. No? Huh? Okay, we have a motion for David Mannix 
as chair of the Finance and Audit Committee. Is that correct? Yes. Is there any discussion on this one? Is there a second? Second. Yes, I already seconded it. <laughs> Like twice. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't hear that for the record. I think this one has go to back for the recording. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. All Please right. No. We'll, 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 uh, we'll let the we'll let play uh, referees go over that one. We have a motion. We have a second. Are there any opposed to the motion? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion passes. David. Congratulations and thank you for all the work that you've done. Thank you. And the work to come. Excellent. Thank you, thank you. Jerry, for your leadership. Thanks, David. All right, Tom, go ahead, Tom. I am also stepping off of the Finance Committee, so just a second uh, voice to that we need more people. Um, comment before that the Finance Committee, I, I don't know how many we're down to now, but it's it's getting slim, so. So, any any anyone that thinks that they have the time and could be helpful to the finance committee, finance and audit committee, it would be very welcome and appreciated. Very important committee. A lot goes on there, and we're learning a lot and refining the way we go about our business. Uh, it's an important place to be if if anyone thinks they can do it. Um, all right. Good meeting, folks. I think we are adjourned.